Norway's North Sea coast, a new start for those made homeless by war. It's quite a change from the life many left behind, especially when it comes to more liberal societies like this one. On New Year's Eve in Germany, as many as a thousand women were attacked by groups of men, many of whom were reported to be migrants. This provoked a debate. What happens to young migrant men once they make it to Europe? Can they fit in? And are they really a danger to women? This is Hergesund in Western Norway. Like many places across Europe, it's taken its fair share of asylum seekers. But the Norwegians are doing things a little differently. They offer refugees what they call cultural coding classes, basically classes teaching men how to better treat women. My name is Mohammed and I am from Iraq. Welcome to my room. Thank you. So you are two people in here. Yes. And how long have you been here? I am since three months. I have, I finished three months. Everything you own in one yes. place. Yes, right. It's good, better than my previous life. You know, when you sleep without thinking of someone will kill you or someone will knock your door. Who do you miss most in Iraq? My mother. Do you talk to her a lot? Every day. Every day? Yeah. I'm sure I'll see them. I'm sure. But she said always, she said, even if you are far away from me, that you are unsafe. That's the good thing. Today, Mohammed will go to the relationship class along with mainly Syrians. Hola, men en må også lære eh, den kulturelle koden i den nye Norway has been running these classes since 2009 after a number of rapes by migrants in a town up the coast. But the course isn't just about rape prevention anymore. Now it includes discussions around communicating with the opposite sex, boundaries, domestic violence, and what to do if you witness a sexual assault. I like someone a lot. It is up to you to decide if you want to have sex. One image used is of a Western woman in a short skirt. The men are asked what they think the woman does for a living. Model or actress, they reply. I asked them what they make of this and if they'd see it in Syria. They say it depends on the area. Some of them say it would be impossible but others that in big cities, it's perfectly normal to see women dress like this. Men are discussing how rape is understood in Syria. In this case, they're all from Syria. And there's a discussion going on around what parts of Syria rape will be considered illegal between a man and a woman who are married. They're talking about how religion plays a role, how culture plays a role. In the cities, some things are considered um, legal and or illegal and in the countryside not so much so it's a really mixed picture it's also a chance for the men to discuss cultural norms back home Mohammed brings up the issue of rape in Iraq we have tribal and family courts in Iraq he says sometimes a woman who's raped by a man will end up being forced to marry him by her family just to save face it's the first time these guys have ever had this sort of conversation. And it's useful. But the class has been criticised for treating all refugees as potential rapists. Preben Svensson is the director of this refugee centre. Do you think it stigmatises them a bit? I don't think so, no. When people find out that the first thing that Norwegians do is teach men about gender norms. Mm. I just think that it's uh, not just we teach them about the cultural difference in many aspects and this is just one of the examples. So for us it's just one of the aspects of cultural codes that they should be aware of. How much of a real difference does four hours in a classroom actually make? It's very difficult to tell, but what we do find is that through the discussions we have and their participation that it's not just about the training itself, it's about creating a good relationship with the people who live here with us so they can also find trust and if they have any challenges in the future, they hopefully will have the confidence to come and ask us for advice if they need to. 
In 2014, 87% of sexual offences were filed against Norwegian citizens, the rest by migrants and other foreigners, including asylum seekers. That year, sexual crime charges were brought against one Syrian, 12 Iraqi and 20 Afghan citizens. So the statistics show that in Norway at least, sexual crimes are not more regularly committed by migrants. It may be that these classes have helped to achieve this in some way. The media has, has been focused on the danger or the difficulties that some women have in Europe from groups of migrant men. Do you think that this is fair? Have you seen this? Have people here seen that happening on the way to Norway, maybe from Syria or from other countries? The majority of people know about sexual assault, this man tells me. Any rational person knows not to do it. The difference is we don't normally talk about it and you do. Another man added that they'd heard about what went on in Germany, but they weren't all like that. My name is Margaret Berg and I'm a counsellor at Hero Kompetanse in Stavanger. What do you think has shocked you most about doing this and meeting these men? What shocked me most was the course I had for women, not for men. Because uh, the women tend to be more judgmental uh, towards each other and towards other women. Uh, they tend to blame the women when there has been violent act or sexual abuse. Uh, for example, when we uh, show the movie Nai Anai, uh, it's a movie about a girl who's been raped. Uh, my question after the movie is, was this a rape or not? All the men agree that that was a rape, but the women, they're not so sure. Do you think that this is the kind of course that could get introduced across Europe? Absolutely because uh, uh, there are not so big differences between, f for example, Great Britain and Norway in the way women behave and the freedom of women, it's very similar. So I think it uh, could easily be held in Great Britain. This is a totally different world to the one many of these men have come from. And it's unclear that four hours in a classroom is gonna make that much of a difference. But they seem to really appreciate the effort that the Norwegians have made to better assimilate them. And it could be that classes like these are rolled out across the whole of Europe. We went to the Oslo Opera House, a hub for all kinds of Europeans coming to visit this iconic building, to ask what they made of these classes. I think that's a good idea. I think um, it's important to teach people who are not from our cultural background um, our rules and our ideas about living together, about how a society works. And I think it's, it's necessary to train people. Um, so we have got this training through all of our life, through our childhood. We've been brought up in this way and um, other people have been brought up in a different way. So from my perspective, this is no topic of racism or anything else. It's just um, you have to know about it. They are very necessary. Uh, it's necessary that they uh, get a feel of the Norwegian culture and the equality between women and men that we preach here, especially we women, of course. <laughs> but. but uh, uh, meeting a Norwegian girl in a miniskirt doesn't mean that she is ready to have sex with you. And I think it's very important that we teach people that. Well, I just read a statistics about uh, which men rape Norwegian women. And uh, uh, it isn't quite true that uh, the majority are immigrants. Or, uh, you know, no. Norwegian men are also... Uh, so maybe everyone should have these classes. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because they are trying to integrate them, they're helping them to integrate Lawrence fled the war in Rwanda 20 years ago to come to Norway as a single young man. He says he empathises with the men he sees making their journeys to Europe now. What was your experience when you first came to Norway? Uh, my experience was that uh, when I came, of course, uh, it was cold. <laughs> that was the first thing I got. <laughs> I was freezing. Where, did you, where was it you came from? Uh, I came from Rwanda. Wow, yeah, yeah. Rwanda to Norway. So, yeah, Rwanda to Norway. Cold. So, yeah, believe me, it was cold. That was my first experience. So when you came 20 years ago, mm. if someone said you need to go to a class, mm. you wouldn't have found that to be at all racist or Not at all, prejudice. not at all, not at all, no. 
for me it was a positive experience and I recommend it to anyone who wants to follow that kind of class. And do you look at what's happening now and feel like something, you have something in common with them coming from over from Syria? Yeah, so the, the, the destruction, war, uh, desperation, losing of hope, uh, losing of, uh, you know, the sense of being a human being. I can, I can, I can see the feeling, I can see the, I can, I can, I can try to somehow relate to them by the human suffering. You know, it, it, we all want the well-being of us, you know, and for them, who, anyone who is coming from there, without knowing exactly what is going on there, I feel like, I, I, I can feel like, you know, when you are, you, 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 you live where you have no hope, no future, you want to get in a place where you are safe, where you can plan, you can plan for, you know, even for being married and having children and, you know, uh, being, being a normal human being. So many of them, maybe they, they have this kind of hopelessness in them. Many of the men I met spoke about what they were looking for in Norway, not just safety, food and shelter, but an active life in which they wanted meaningful relationships. They said they didn't see the courses here as rape prevention. They take them because they hope they might make it easier to find a partner and ease what is often a very solitary existence. I'm speaking with a woman. She's uh, 31 years old. The day after class, I met with Mohammed again. He said he'd arranged a date with a local girl the night before, but she cancelled last minute. She'd been helping him to learn Norwegian. What do you say to people who think there's a problem with refugees talking to Norwegians? I'm not doing the wrong thing. I'm not doing that big mistake. I'm just speaking with her. No problem. The problem if I make wrong thing with her. That's the problem. And if I did that wrong thing, it will be... Uh, people will say, look at the refugees, what they, they are doing. They are bad, they are, you know, what, will, what they can say. What is the difference between people? We are all human beings. You are 29 years old, I'm 27. You have Instagram, I have Instagram. You have Facebook, I have Facebook. You have Snapchat, I have... I had you, by the way. So what's the difference between people? Okay, there's differences between cultures, but... I led them to see my culture. I hope and I wish that people speak with me about my culture, not give their opinion, maybe bad opinion, on us as refugees. So I'm always saying, only with the Motak here, the office of the refugees, we are all human beings. There is no differences between people. That's the point.